Hey, Algebra 2. Um, our second lesson for Chapter 7 has to do with products and quotients of rational expressions. Um, we did some factoring and, and reducing with our last lesson. Now we're going to actually use some fractions. All right, so um, let's start off with this product here and quotient. Um, the concept that we're dealing with is reducing diagonally or vertically. And so now we we know that 4 over 12, we could divide both of those by 4, and the, the 4 becomes a 1, the 12 becomes a 3. Same thing here, the diagonally, the 15 and the 25. If I divide that by 5, this becomes a 3. If I divide that by 5, that becomes by a 5. And now we just multiply across. 1 times 3 is 5. 3 times uh, 3 is 9. So we end up with 5 ninths as our answer. Well, we're going to be doing the same thing, it's just now we're going to have variables involved. Um, so, well, what we can do is start off, if you look diagonally here, always I would like to always deal with my coefficients first. I have 10 and 15, those are both divisible by 5, so the 10 becomes the 2, 15 divided by 5 is 3. Now I have also the 6 and the 9, those are divisible by 3, so 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, now we have, let's do our variables. We have a to the third on top, a to the first on bottom. So therefore I can get rid of this a and take this one down by an exponent. So that becomes a squared. Again, we had three powers of a on top, one power on bottom, so we got rid of one on top and bottom. Now we do our b. We have b to the first, invisible one b to the fourth, so I can get rid of this b, and I could lower this one to be b to the third, okay? So that's our b. Now let's deal with the x. We have x to the first on bottom, x to the second on top. So I get rid of this x right here, and I lower that by one, so it becomes x to the first, okay? And now I have y to the third on top, y to the fourth on bottom, so I can get rid of all three on top. I can get three exponents out of here, so it leaves me with just y on bottom. So we've actually reduced all that we can, and now we're just going to multiply across. Again, always deal with your coefficients first. We have 2 times 2 is 4. Now we're left with an a squared here, and we're left with an x on this side. And on the bottom, we have 3 times 3 is 9. We have b to the third. I always like to write alphabetically. So b to the third, and then y. And this would be our final answer. We can't reduce any more than that. Okay. And uh, something to note, if you're ever left with the same variable on top and bottom, when there's no plus or minus signs, just all multiplication, if you have the same letter top and bottom, you're not done yet. Then, therefore, there's still more to be able to reduce. Okay. So this is how you do a problem where you have to um, multiply fractions in which you have variables. So now let's make this a little bit harder here. We have 2x squared minus 12x minus 14 over x to the third minus 16x times negative 16 minus 4x over 6x minus 42. Now on a problem like this, my recommendation is to first rewrite where the x is in front of the number without x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually rearrange this to make it negative 4x minus 16. Okay. Again, all I did was I switched the order of the problem so I have the x's first, the numbers without x second. Now from here, what I have to ask myself, again like we did with our last lesson, is can I factor on the top? In this case, I can factor I can factor out of 2, which leaves me with x squared minus 6x minus 7. On bottom, I can actually factor out an x, which leaves me with x squared minus 16, if I take an x out of top and bottom, times up here on top, I can factor out a negative 4. So I'm going to factor out a negative 4, which leaves me with x plus 4, if I divide both terms by negative 4. I'm left with x plus 4. And on bottom, I'm, if I, I can actually factor out a 6, 
which leaves me with x minus 7. Now, what we want to do from here is, again, can we even break this further down? So we can actually break the top into two parentheses. So we have the 2 out front. We have x and then x. And we know because of this minus sign that it's going to be opposite symbols, so plus and minus. And then the factors of 7 that are 6 away from each other is 7 and 1. Okay? Now on the bottom, I can actually factor this into two parentheses as well. This is in the format of a squared minus b squared, which we learned a little while ago. So therefore, we know we can break this up into x plus 4, x minus 4. And we're just going to rewrite the rest over here. Okay? And remember, we can reduce um, vertically or diagonally. Okay? And we can also cancel out full parentheses. So first of all, I see x minus 7, x minus 7, top and bottom. And I see an x plus 4, top and bottom. But not only that, I have coefficients. I have a 2 and a 6. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And it looks like that's all I can actually reduce. So on top, I'm left with a negative 4. And I'm left with an x plus 1. And on bottom, I'm left with a 3 and an x and an x minus 4. Okay? And so here, we have nothing left to reduce. There's nothing more that we can reduce. Remember, do not cancel out those x's because of the plus and minus here. You can't reduce those x's. So you'd have to leave it just like this. This would be your final simplified answer. Okay? Again, quite a few steps. Factor anything you can up top, which we factor out the 2, then broke it up into two parentheses. Here we factor out the x, then broke this into two parentheses. We rearranged this to begin with. Um, it's not there anymore, but we rearranged it to begin with. It was negative 16 minus 4x. So we rearranged it, then factored out the negative 4. Here we factored out the 6, and then we just start canceling stuff out that we can, and then multiply across what we have left. Okay? So that is what we do when there's a multiply in between. Now the question is, what happens when you have a division problem? Okay, what happens when there's a divided by symbol in between? And there's an easy answer for this. So we have 9x squared minus 4y squared over 12x squared y to the fifth. Okay? Well, if there is a division symbol in between, you can change any division problem into a multiplication problem. Not just by erasing it and turn to a multiplication sign, but what you do is rewrite the left side, just rewrite it the way it looks, and what you can do is change this to a multiplication symbol, but if you're going to do that, you have to flip the other fraction, okay? So you can change any division problem into a multiplication problem by flipping the right side. Okay. So now the question is, what can we factor? Now we go back to the same steps as we did before. Can we factor anything out on top here? It looks like we can factor out an x. If you factor out an x on top, in this numerator, you're left with 3x minus 2y. Now you can't factor anything out here, so let's just rewrite it for now. 8x to the third y. And we have times 12x squared y to the fifth over, now here we can actually factor into two parentheses, because notice we have a squared minus b squared, a squared minus b squared, so we can factor this into two parentheses. This becomes 3x plus 2y, 3x minus 2y, okay? Again, we factor this into two parentheses. Now what we see here, now it's multiplication, we can cancel out top and bottom. We have a 3x minus 2y and a 3x minus 2y. Notice we have one power of x here, two powers. So notice we have three powers of x on top. One, two, three, and we have three on bottom. So therefore I can take three away from the top 
and take the one away from the bottom. Again, we had one, two, three. So we had three powers of x on top, three on bottom. So we can just cancel those out. Um, we have 12 over 8, which both those you can divide by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And lastly, we have y to the 5th over y to the 1st. So this y goes away, and this becomes y to the 4th. We took a power away from both of those. So now we just figure out what are we left with on top and multiply it. We have a 3 and a y to the 4th. So we have 3y to the 4th over... Over here, all we're left with is the 2 and the parentheses here, which is 3x plus 2y. And again, you cannot reduce the y's or the 3's because of that plus sign. So this would be your final answer. So again, there you go. So again, any division problem you can change into a multiplication problem simply by, by flipping the second fraction. And from there, we factor what we can, top and bottom. And then we just start reducing what we can. And we're left with this as our answer. Okay? So let's do one more problem. Um, it may look more difficult, but in actuality, it's the same type of problem as the other ones. So we have negative 2x minus 5 over x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 1 over... 2x minus x minus 15 divided by x plus 1 over x minus 3. Well, again, we don't like the division symbol there, so we can change it by flipping this fraction. Okay, So I'm not going to rewrite the whole thing. You guys can just follow along. Instead of having a division symbol, I'm going to change it to a multiplication and I can do that if I flip this fraction right here to make this x minus 3 over x plus 1. Again, I just flipped this fraction that was after the division symbol. Now what we do is we see if we can factor. Well, we could factor out a negative up top here, which gives us 2x plus 5 over x squared minus 1. We can actually factor that out. x squared minus 1 becomes x plus 1, x minus 1. Same thing up here, which I hope you see that we're going to eventually cancel those out anyways. But let's go ahead and factor x plus 1, x minus 1. Now we can factor this into two parentheses. Oops, that's supposed to be squared. Because we have x squared, x to the first, no x. So we could factor this into two parentheses. We have 2x and x, okay? And this is going to be a minus 5 and a plus 3. We've fact we've done this before um, with these type of problems. Uh, so you should know. Actually, this is a plus 5 and a minus 3. Sorry. Because that gives us negative 6 plus 5, which is negative 1. And we've done factoring before, so I'm not going to spend too much time on explaining this. Times x minus 3 over x plus 1. Now we're done. Uh, we can actually go down to just canceling out. Now notice we have two x plus ones on bottom, but we we'll only have one on top. You can only cancel out one for one. One on top, one on bottom. So we're going to cancel out x plus one here, top and bottom. x minus one, top and bottom. We have a two x plus five, two x plus five. And we have an x minus three and an x minus three. So really, all we're left with on top is this negative and a, an invisible 1. So we're left with a negative 1 on top and an x plus 1 on bottom because everything else got canceled out. So this is our final answer. So this is um, how we simplify. Now some of you guys may be asking what's the...